Hello and welcome to the May 23rd, 2023 Berwick Select Board meeting. The board is present minus Linda and Mark, town manager, town clerk, manager of the uh, of town public works. Public works, thank you. I don't know why my brain is Public works and facilities. Public works, that's where I was getting facilities. And uh, various members of the public, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right. First, we have the approval of our May 9th meeting minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. Any? Oh, Linda's here. Sorry. You're fine. You're fine. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Both minutes. Minutes. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, approved. Um, before we get to first public comment, I just want to make a quick statement. This past week, we had the um, okay. candidates' night for the upcoming election for the two open seats on the select board. I think it went really great. I'm glad that all the candidates came. Um, but I did hear a couple things that concerned me and I just wanted to make sure I could dispel any worries. Um, everything the town does is in the open. There's no secret meetings, there's no secret decisions, there's no backroom deals. Everything the town does is open and available to the public. If you have any questions or concerns, whether it be about rec field, water plant, roads, public services of any kind, you can email any member of the board. You can email the town manager. We will get back to you. Somebody has the information that you're looking for, and it's all available to the public. You don't need any special authorization to get it. It's all available to everybody. So if you have concerns or are looking for information, reach out to us. We'll get it to you. We have meet, you know, there's a lot of meetings. We go through a lot of this stuff. And sometimes it takes years to make progress and sometimes months to go back to things, but it's all out in the open. We have the information. Just email us. You'll get, you'll get a response. So first public comment. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak on something not related to the upcoming proposed speed tables? Please state your name and address for the record. For the record, I'm uh, Michael Wright, uh, 103 Cemetery Road. Um, I'm currently serving on the comprehensive, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> comprehensive plan review committee. I'm also on the board of uh, directors of the Great Works Regional Land Trust. I've been following the selectman meeting and the planning board meetings on BCTV when I can, and. I just have to say BCTV has done a marvelous job. It's such an asset to the town. I talk to people in other towns who don't have a public uh, television, a uh, community TV, and, and uh, we really benefit from that. One of the concerns that I'm hearing constantly is how do we manage continuing growth with the desire to keep the rural character, the open spaces, farmlands, and woodlands that, we, that makes Berwick, uh, a place where so many people want to come uh, to live. This is what Great Works Regional Land Trust has been addressing for the past 35 years. The trust serves the towns of Berwick, North Berwick, South Berwick, Lebanon, um, not Lebanon, <laughs> uh, Elliott Wells and Algonquin. Uh, and the trust has currently served about, conserved about 7,000 acres in the six towns uh, through conservation easements and through owning the property. Uh, in Berwick, they've protected just under 1,500 acres um, with 19 projects under our belt so far, <coughs> protecting the woodlands, uh, water resources, and uh, including six farms today. Uh, and uh, the trust has also provided public access with uh, 18, soon to be 20, uh, public access uh, um, preserves where we have parking and hiking trails for the public. In Baroque, we've had three trails uh, preserves with uh, public access. That's Grants Meadow in uh, Beaver Dam Heath, the Key Brook Preserve, and the Nwichawanic Woods. This Friday, uh, May 26 at 10 a.m., we're going to be opening our fourth uh, public access preserve, uh, Tuckahoe Preserve, 
on Hubbard Road, and I hope that some of you can come and anybody in the public uh, could come uh, as well. Um, Tuckahoe Preserve was purchased from Tuckahoe Turf Farm with a grant from the North American Wetland Conservation Act, MACA, which, uh, with matching funds including $10,000 appropriated from the voters of Berwick. Berwick, like the other towns, great work serves. Uh, consistently supported conservation and open spaces, typically with 75 to 89 percent of the voters approving funding for projects. The trust is a member supported nonprofit, and if you really want to save open spaces, working farms in Berwick, uh, one of the best ways to do that is to support Great Works Regional Land Trust and become a mem member of the trust. This is really easy. You can go to our website. Go to uh, Great Works Regional Land Trust, and uh, you can click on the site and become a member. There is really a lot more open spaces, special spaces in Berwick that we can preserve for future generations. Hope to see you on the trails. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other for public comment? All right, I will close the public comment. And now we have a public hearing on proposed speed tables on Sweetser Street and Dobson Road. Sure, uh, we get requests for traffic calming every once in a while, and we've had requests going back to last year for Sweetser Street and Dobson Road. Um, talk with Jody about it. We put in some temporary speed bumps in Dobson, kind of see how it went to mix reviews. The speed uh, those are speed bumps. Those temporary ones on Dobson are, are historically speed bumps. They're pretty aggressive. You know, they're, they're thick like that, and they're, you know, I don't even know, six inches long, maybe. And th those have a design speed of, like, a mile an hour. You can go over those things. Um, we have speed humps that are downtown in our kind of core downtown area. Those maybe you can go five mile an hour over them. Talking about speed tables, and they are they are different. They're a form of a speed hump, um, and the design speeds are designed from anywhere to 15 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. So you should be go, go be able to go over those comfortably at those speeds and not feel like you're gonna take off or bottom out. Um, I had a call today about a concern about the location on Sweeter Street, and I, I took a look, and this is something that based off where the drainage is and uh, kind of where it makes sense, something that Jody and I will talk with Justin from Libby Scott. If kind of the feedback is we get to go ahead and the board confirms the direction. Um, on Sweetser, as an approximate location, would be right around the Morse intersection. Uh, I'd propose one, see how it goes. And that's kind of right in the middle between Memorial Field and Rochester Street. And for the one at uh, Dobson, proposed probably right in the middle area, right around 9 Dobson. And that's, I believe there's an access to Penny Pond Trail. So that's kind of the overview, and I'd turn it back to you, Noah. Right, so um, now this whole, the, the, the speed tables, this was brought to you. This was not something that you thought up on your own. This was something that came to you as a, from concerned citizens, right? Yep, just a uh, concern about speeds and anytime you get a straight a street people tend to go faster than what's comfortable for the neighborhood well i mean i can get up to 40 miles an hour on my driveway so i mean it's it's not hard to get up that you know get fast on just a straight narrow thing and you know with memorial field being there there's a lot of in and out of traffic and i'm sure there's plenty of people that don't obey the traffic laws as they're designed um overall the board is mostly supportive of this idea. We wanted a public hearing to hear from any members of the surrounding area who might have an issue or be in support. Um, so if you have something that you want us to, to take into consideration before we make a decision one way or the other, please step up to the microphone, state your name and address, and let us know what you think. My name is Don Ganarelli, 14 Sweetser Street, Berwick. I've been living here for approximately 11 and a half years now. 
and I have watched more speeding going down that street than you can shake a stick at. There's children riding bikes. That is a wreck street. First of all, every town that I've ever lived in, including my own in Pennsylvania, the speed limit was 20 miles an hour and there was speed tables, speed bumps, whatever they had back then, because kids ride bikes. They were out there the other night riding around in the street. People walk their dogs. Sometimes they're in the street. Uh, that's a very busy little street. And I can tell you, just this week alone, there has been 25 to 30 incidences of speeding and almost an accident on that street the other day. And Blair, the police officer, was talking to us about a lost dog and chased a guy down that ran the stop sign going into Sweetser Street. Sweetser Street needs more than one speed bump. It does not need a speed bump down near the the uh, rec field because everybody's pulling into the parking lot and they're going slow. They need a speed bump after probably after uh, 10 Sweetser Street, the garage that is owned by my friends over here, right after their garage and one before, well before the stop sign, like after my house, because the traffic's not going to slow down. And I would like to see that speed limit and a sign at 20 miles an hour and a children at play sign. I, we're not backwards here. We, we know what we're doing. So I would hope that um, you would take that into consideration, Mr. Chair. Um, James and I talked about this many occasions, but we don't need one speed bump. We need at least two on the main part of Sweetser. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, before we get to the next person, James, are we able to, like, uh, double speeding fines in that area? Is that something that's, that we're able to enable as a town? Probably a question for the police. I, yeah. can, I can check in on that and get back to you. Okay. Is anybody else we should speak? Please. <clears throat> I am Kyle Heen. Uh, live on 11 Dobson Road. I'm the president of the HOA in that area. Uh, I, I echo the comments uh, the previous speaker had that one is not going to be sufficient on Dobson. We have children that play between, basically between 9 and 16. So that's a problem. The other problem would be uh, we already have a drainage issue at 9, and if you go put in a speed bump there, we're going to have a bigger drainage issue. Um, number 9 ends up with a flooded driveway when there's snow on the ground and we have rain because it doesn't drain because the sidewalk is destroyed. So, so you're saying that instead of having one around number 9, you're saying that it would be better to have two, two. that kind of like Similar box to what we did last year. Nine. Similar to the, speed hump, the, the bumps that you guys had, you were, I think there were around five, okay. so a little yeah. further down, and then there was one up the street, uh, closer to like 15, 16. Okay. And that significantly cut down traffic. I, other than the fact that they were aggressive, <laughs> that was the only negative, right? Other than that, you, hit them and you, go to them. <laughs> you took out bottoms. We had people that couldn't come through because they were so bad. But they did the job. We saw significantly reduced traffic. And while there was a little bit of a thoroughfare between the two humps, it wasn't as bad. And like I said, we've got several families with children that are playing in the streets and riding bikes and dogs and such like that. So um, since since they've come out, we've certainly seen an uptick in traffic, speed, and uh, and so that's not, you know, and we're getting into the time where people start playing. All right, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, Dave Ross Lines 2 Dobson Road. I've actually been probably the biggest advocate for these uh, speed humps, speed tables, speed bumps, speed controlling device on Dobson Road. I'm the first house on the right. I've nearly been taken out on my motorcycle pulling out of my driveway by people cutting through that street. The intersection of Old Pine Hill North and Old Pine Hill South and School Street, it's really dangerous. People choose to cut through Dobson Road area um, to save time, make it a little easier on themselves. I also will agree that I do think that there does need to be two speed humps on that table. I think it's just going to become an, a race course, racing up to it, slowing down, and then racing through the rest of that neighborhood. The predominant number of children on that neighborhood are after number five. 
I think that if we place the speed tables where the speed bumps were last year, I think they'll be the most effective. Along with that, I would also recommend po possibly putting up some speed limit signs, as there aren't any. Unposted speeds in the state of Maine are 25 miles an hour. There's no speed limit signs on that road. There's no slow children signs on that road. It's, it's really dangerous for anybody on that road. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Cameron Donnelly, 9 Sweetser Street. Well, I lived in Berwick for a year now. I have two small children, and the short year I've lived on Sweetser Street, I've seen more speeding than I've ever seen in Raleigh, North Carolina. And I live in a big city. And having two children under five playing outside in my front yard, it's a very dangerous road to have them playing in my own front yard. Don't feel comfortable with it. The proposed location of the speed table is absolutely worthless, honestly. It will do nothing to stop the speeding flying into the street. I mean, like he gentleman just said, it's gonna be a game of catch up. They're gonna go flying down, slam on the brakes. But at that point, they're already going too fast. My children are gonna get taken out one day and I I don't wanna stand for that. So I honestly think you should install two further up on the road, possibly right after Mr. Ken's house. They won't have a time to uh, get enough speed to cause any damage to children. And I don't think any of us want that in our conscience. So, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Does anybody have any objection to the speed tables? <laughs> that works as well. That's also fine. It's all Cantar, right. 10 Suites of Street. My biggest concern was it was going to be between my driveway and Rochester Street. We have cars that won't be able to get over these things. I have a hot rod. It won't. So if it's after my driveway, I'm good. I agree 100% with what these guys said. They need to. That's it. What number, what number are you? 10. 10. 10. Okay. Sorry. I'm also going to echo, I'm, I'm nine Dobson Road. Um, my children are the ones that play out front. Uh, so, very supportive. Um, my husband did not be able to buy a car, though, because of that other set of speed pumps. He drove it home and couldn't get over the speed bump and had to return a car. <laughs> so, I don't recommend that you use those with any... <laughs> like, they're not... <laughs> A viable option. Uh, it, it wasn't really that lo it, like it should have gone over, and he had to return a car. So, um, but uh, I'm happy with what they've done for the street and really gotten rid of a lot of the traffic. And my kids are a lot safer. I'll do one other comment. Right here, I'll use 14 Sweeter Street. Um, as far as the drainage goes, we talked about this a little bit. Um, those tables, if to me, if they're made in such a manner where they don't come all the way to the curb, the water will flow down the street on both sides. So I think that's that's the key um, to keeping the water flowing because it is a pro it can be a problem because we need the water getting in the drains. Thank you. Thank you. One of the one of the things you no know, we've been talking about this actually. We've been talking about it for years. You know, that's where the temporary ones came in that we put out in the in the neighborhood out there. Um, and the the difference between the the temporary ones, which are the six by sixes basically in the roadway, and the speed tables, is by stretching it out. Is uh, people should be able to get their cars over these. Is um, you know, we when we were doing the work on the bridge on Hubbard Road. And we had some of these temporary ones in the neighborhoods up there. As my nephew, who lived up there, couldn't get his hot rod out of his yard for the same reason until he came out. But, so by using the tables and spreading that out, the, the distance out, it should be easier for the car, people to get over. But as still, if you're going to go hit them at 30 miles an hour, you're going to you're going to feel it in your car. So as they still do the intended purpose. Any other comments? 
no, I think two is the way to go on in both neighborhoods. Yeah. I, th I think we heard that loud and clear. Yes. Yeah. I think um, it's very obvious that uh, everybody's, certainly everybody who's present wants to see the speed tables put in. They want the, the to be thought out where they're put in so they're not blocking driveways, they're not blocking drainage, and they all want two, two. on each street and more signage on each street. Yeah. Um, I think a sign that says double fee, double fines will be most effective, um, but I don't, again, don't know yeah, how that would work out. State. That's something we have to talk state. to state or police or whatever. Yeah. I, 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 I have a feeling that uh, there's probably some state regulation that you can't you can treat that, those roads any different than any other road. So the, well, it well, doesn't hurt to ask. Well, and no, it, right. also, does not and hurt it also ask. doesn't hurt. We can well, we can well, also lower it down to fifteen miles an hour. <laughs> we can do that, and um, I think that's not a bad idea. But um, also, I mean, the police have the ability to change their 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 fees for you know driving infractions. So even if it's not just double on those roads, it could be double in those areas. I, you know, I will say that the speed limit. Uh, Change will be up to the state. The town has really no, no authority to change that. So it's a process through the police department. Could take up to a year and a half, two years. Gotcha. Um, well, those are things that we can work on for sure. But, but we definitely can put some. Signs but we definitely, in. but we definitely can control the speed tables and the signage. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so now this is the public hearing and the approval. Um, in terms of the approval, uh, I mean, do we have a budgeted number on this? Or is this something that we actually have? Uh, are I mean, we disapproving I mean, I think the for, engineering? I just think for tonight's purposes, just a general go-ahead to approve up to two speed tables on both streets. And we need to, uh, there are what, like 6000 a piece? Oh, like well, we have to look at the street and see if it needs to be paved or if it needs to be crack-filled. And then we can go from there. Which, even if they're approved, that's a point where it might not be this year where all four get installed. It just, we did it. It just, it, I know, I, I mean, take the direction from the board, but my assumption would be that it kind of gets put into our general working plan for the roads and it gets weighted with other segments we have going on. We would certainly have to see how the budget passes for July 1st. Yeah, that's true. For sure. Which we. <laughs> Yeah, if we have only one more meeting and then we have the budget approval right. vote. So um, obviously that will be a factor. So would we have enough in this budget if it's passed to be able to put two under, under capital right? improvements? To be Hard able to, to say at this point till we get a number and where they are now. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, well, but they'll be in. I mean, they'll be in the queue. To, I mean, if not, yeah. Well, yeah. Is we don't we don't have any any you know firm commitments on any roads or anything yeah. yet for that uncovering. So the money money will be in the budget. We just have to allocate it from you know the right spots. So. Right. So yeah. basically, we're approving the concept, and then you guys are going to start the engineering, get us a price, and then we can approve that at a later date. Or even if, even if you just approve, yeah. I don't even think you have to do that. You just approve the direction, and we can. Just, yeah, unless you want us fine. to come back with the price and all yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm just concerned that you're saying that we, we want to install four of these, but it could be a year before they're installed? No. I'm just waiting for the budget. Yeah. Okay, think we so it it's something four. that can be done. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll, yeah. I'm sure we can. Right. Depending on the contractor that's doing our paving for ourselves right now, yep. with all the work that they have, um, I'm, I'm sure we can get them in by fall. I see no problem with that. Does anybody else wish to speak before I close the public hearing portion? Okay, then I will close the public hearing and I will make a motion that we approve um, up to two speed tables on Dobson Street and Sweetser Street and um, additional signage for uh, those roads as a matter of reducing speeding in those areas. Um, yeah, I figure that covers it. I'll second that. I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Just a comment that, I mean, we're talking about a lot of children in that area, so I, I, get, I get it, you got a list, and but maybe somewhere, you know, prioritize it a little as soon as we could get them. 
Okay. I know it takes time. I know that. I, I'm just saying. We're going to we're yeah, wait until July 1st just to yeah. get the money. So. Just to get the money. I know, but <laughs> so, I just... So July 1st is, is the date we need before we can actually start doing the work. But I was going to say if we can at least get the signage out there right after 1st, too, yeah. and make right. that a priority, at least start yeah. it in the right direction. Any further discussion? That's bad. All those in favor? All right. So okay. that is approved. <laughs> oh, you want to run? <laughs> Come right up. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Dad. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. All right. We have no reports of committees at this time. Thank we you. had a department report from the parks director, but that is going to be pushed to next meeting. Okay. Um, we have no appointments. Uh, no unfinished business. Town manager's report. <coughs> to piggyback on what Mike presented earlier, uh, the town did apply for an open space grant. We were one percentage point off from winning the grant. But we're going to apply for another grant, um, working with SMPDC for an open space plan and for the community garden so we're working on that, and we're going to have the hearing for the community garden. I have it penciled in for the next meeting. So this open space plan, um, right now we have about $80,000 in open space funds. And that money accumulates with every bedroom that gets added in the community. And this open space plan will prioritize habitats, farmlands, um, large pieces of property, probably pieces that connect to other preserved lands. Also, through um, a joint effort with Envision Berwick and Comprehensive Planning, Maine Farmland Trust is working with the town to develop a, a farmer survey and help us with farming specifically for our comprehensive plan. And they're doing that. Um, they have a, a position dedicated to it, so it's at no cost to the town. Um, the lift for the auditorium is uh, scheduled to be shipped for the beginning of June. So whether it's ready for the election will be pretty close. Be close? <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be incredibly close. Hmm. Yeah, I got a new doorbell in just in case. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, MRI will be in attendance for the next select board meeting on June 6th to go over the payroll services. I did get back hear back from one of the references that they said that the hourly service it wasn't excessive or they really didn't use it that much at all um, last thing i have is uh mr willie from uh, the abatement request from the last meeting is appealing to your county this is very similar to an appeal to your county from last year. So the appeal is June 7th, and I plan on going on behalf of the town. And we almost have this identical letter from last time because it is the same response. The select board, by statute, actually can't grant that type of appeal. So that's what I plan on doing is going to the commissioners and exp you know, explaining that on the behalf of the board. And that completes my update. Uh, I have a question. You said the uh, the grant was off by a percent. What do you mean by that? It's off by like a point. We were off by we were off by. Um, so we applied to Prepa, which is for the estuary. I believe it's. Um, so they are keepers of the you know, estuary, and they give out grants and. We applied, and I think we were like one point off from winning the grant. So, like, they graded it, and it yeah. was one point below winning. Yeah. Terrific. Okay. <laughs> Back in school again. Got a, got a 92. Couldn't get to the 93. Okay. Um, no select board communications, although today is the day that HBO Max becomes... Max. Max. So that's very important for everybody to know. Um, the approval of the accounts payable. 
All right. We have a uh, payroll warrant number 77 from May 18th, 2023 in the amount of $80,034.36. We have a payroll warrant number 78 from May 25th, 2023 in the amount of $77,317.30. And we have an accounts payable warrant number 79, uh, May 23rd, 2023 in the amount of $222,909.90. I make the motion that we pay our bills. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Terrific. New business. Proposed amendment to the fund balance policy. So this amendment was reviewed by our auditors and they said it looks good. This allows us to use undesignated fund balance to reduce the town's tax levy. So it reduces the amount needed to be raised by taxes. So, James, the only part that's changing is the part, just to, I'm just confirming, is this part right here, right? Yes, the only part that's changing is the um, second to last sentence on page three. Okay. okay. And that is just an addition, that is not a change. Right. That's a, just, a, just an added sentence. Because it, it just, it says the, um, for our undesignated fund balance, we need 12.5%. And anything over that, it just it says right now we can use it for capital needs, and this just adds that it can also be used to reduce the tax levy. So we don't have an infinitely building undesignated fund balance. If we have an extra million dollars, we can apply it to. <laughs> I mean, hypothetically, we can apply it to our our already existing needs Correct. and lower the, the, the tax lower the million. Yeah. yeah. I will hear a motion. Can we already put that? No, this has not been approved. Huh. We, we talked about it, but we didn't. Uh, not the amendment. It yeah. just says approved originally. Gotcha. So oh, I see. Okay. okay, so I'll make a, <laughs> make a motion to approve the amendment to um, the Town of Herrick Main Fund Balance Policy. I'll second it. Any further discussion? I'd, ju I'd just like to you know, make the comment that is it, this says that we can use that money, but it depends on the town vote right. to. For us to do it so it's not that we right. can just take the money it has to go before the voters as with anything correct Where's right. with any, right yep it's an option but it's not a requirement right? yes we can optionally put it forward to the voters and they can either accept it or shoot it down as they can right. with all budget <clears throat> budget policy um so uh, a motion and a second uh, all those in favor all right next we have bond allonge it's a great word, isn't it? Yeah. I'm assuming you say it with a French flair? I feel like you have to, yeah. This is, um, it extends a general obligation bond because we're still in interim financing with the $1.2 million bond. We're still in preliminary engineering. So once we're through that preliminary engineering, we'll very quickly actually spend the money and get into the permanent bond financing. But in the meantime, we have not spent all that money, so that's why we're still in that interim financing. Uh, with this 1.2 million, about 250,000 of it, 247,000, has already been forgiven as part of principal forgiveness, and that's actually where uh, the preliminary engineering is being sp spent now. Um, we're making our way through that. We did the pilot testing to confirm that the pretreatment would work. Uh, it, conf it went <coughs> really well. So now for designing the pretreatment, which is essentially a separate building that will treat the water for manganese and turbidity before it even gets to a water plant. Um, so also along with that is uh, a recycling system that will be upgraded. And then we have a host of pump replacements and other uh, improvements. And there's a project coming up that will dip into this funds um, that will immediately upgrade the plant in several ways. So that was kind of what Maine Water covered the last meeting. So what are we actually voting to approve? Is this, there's this long. 
Extending the date. We're extending the, the date, date and the, the maturity date. That we have, yeah. That's why I just wanted to be clear about because I, I, because all this looks fine to me, but I don't see what change we're actually voting upon. So we're actually. So what was the what is the current date? No, I think it's uh, the maturity date was July, twenty twenty three. Okay, so we're extending it by a year. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion. To make a second amendment to the $1.2 million general obligation note dated July 22nd, 2022, and awarded to Maine Municipal Bond Bank, Augusta, Maine, by changing the maturity date to July 19th, 2024, and further to authorize the chair of the select board to execute said allonge, I like that allonge. allonge in all other documents necessary to complete said amendment. All other terms and conditions as stated in said general obligation note will remain the same. Second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That is officially allonged. <laughs> Not sure if you can burb that, but I did. Um, amendment to the traffic subject. ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a call a long-standing understanding that the apartments on 10 Sullivan Street have had dedicated parking spaces along Back Street. Uh, this is something that you mean talking with Chief Town and just uh, Ron Long's the owner of several conversations with them. And it's something that I feel like with the downtown developing, I, I feel that honoring that and not allowing the development to, you know, take those spots from the tenants. It's a unique standing, you know, quirk of the downtown where it is a uh, public street. So the uh, parking has been an issue lately for those tenants. Um, there's three spots there and between Great Falls Construction um, in the police. We've been trying to work through this issue. It's just gotten to the point where uh, we've gone as far as we can and taking a different approach for police to actually be able to enforce is this proposal of a permit uh, parking system. So, so basically, are we seeing like the construction personnel, everything parking in where the tenants it's a mix. Park? It's a mix of brewery yeah i'd say a, a lot of it is you know the people going to corner point is uh because they have the same problem in front of the the deli yep. is uh you know people come they go to, they pull into the first available parking spot and then they spend four or five hours there you know? <laughs> so the, um i know the the uh parking on on the alleyway back street there is uh historically that been there all my life is it's been allowed, and <clears throat> is I know that when uh, Great Falls was working with Ron Wong, trying to you know, you know, make sure that those parking spots were accessible for his tenants still. So is, uh, I don't have a problem with this. Is I think it's something you know it's, it's a good place to start. Is uh, you know we may not need to do anything else for the next ten years on anything, but. You know, it's a good place to start and get something going and have everything all set up. Based on this, who is, I understand the police are enforcing <coughs> the park by permit. If you don't have a permit and you're parked there, you can be fined, towed, whatever. That makes sense to me. Are the police issuing the permits, or is no, the town issuing the it, town or is the or is the actual just businesses? It'd be the town issuing. It would them. be my department. Okay, so you would be issuing parking permits to the proper tenants mm -hmm. and then they anybody prove that they are yeah, resident. They, yes. okay and anybody who parks there without that the police are are able to handle it mm -hmm. okay any other questions is there any escalation in this so right now you have a setup that if you pay within 72 hours it's $15 longer than that it's $30 so if I'm a frequent flyer and I get 15 permits and I go I'm not gonna pay there's nothing in here that says after a certain amount I can tow the vehicle or at the owner's expense or anything. So 
I think it's the boot is the escalation. The boot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's. <laughs> yeah, they show the boot. Yeah, there's boots. Yeah, they, some of them can be disabled. Um, but um, okay, so that's what you're gonna do is do the boot until it's paid for. Right. Okay. Party boot. Um, and this is only you're only talking the two spots, right? Yeah, it'd be three, three right on Back Street. Um. So you're talking about by subway, that little area yes, in there. Behind there. Right. And are you talking also by corner point? It would be just those just, just those three. Just spots. those three, yeah, for now. Okay. And the thing I like about this is that if parking does become an issue, you know, two years from now, where it's a smashing success here. That's what I'm wondering. And we're it starting to see specifically say well, if we're starting to see like our municipal lots, then we could probably do some sort of permit permit system. Like employees or employee, something. Employee, right. Something like that, yeah. For um, like weekdays, Monday through Friday. Right. Yeah. Right. Monday yeah. through Friday, permit parking only. And, and I I agree with, with, with this, but I also agree that it should probably be escalatable to towing as well. Right. Um, I think that that should be something that is, I mean, is, is it, I mean at least for repeat offenders, long term, yeah. you know, if you're going to park there for three days in a row and you're not moving... I mean, a boot doesn't help the people that need to park there. In right. fact, it makes it harder for them to... If they get a boot on a Friday afternoon, you know, they're not going to move it until Monday. Yeah. It know? might be inconvenient. They can go into the town and pay for it. So now they're not getting the boot removed till Monday. The resident still doesn't get to park there all weekend. Yeah, it, it might be inconvenient to the person who gets booted, but it's also inconvenient for the people that That's were trying to help. right. Exactly. So, um, and I'm sure the tow company will just love it. They'll just love to come out here and... Because they, I, only takes I, they certainly love towing people during snow <coughs> in Portland and all sorts I of I think there should be two around. reasons. Either excessive and we can set a limit for a number of tickets that it goes to, and it goes to um, towing. And then period of time. If that same car has been parked there for, you know, a two day, or three days yeah. or the boot has been on for more than 48 hours, you know, the boot has been in place for 48 hours. At that point, it still isn't gone. They haven't paid. I mean, what if it's a... Uh, like this weekend, a long weekend, and they get booted on Friday, the resident can't park there until the car is moved on Tuesday. That's not fair to the resident. No. I think that after 48 hours, you should be able and, to call and, a tow truck and get and it out of there. And to be fair, I mean, the, the examples of signs on the back here, these are these are good signs, but nothing is more effective than, you know, you, you will, will be, be towed. towed. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that is that's a, what I mean. I mean, it's, it's, there's no sign that makes me think twice about parking somewhere that says, has the word tow on it, because people do it. So um, that is my recommended change that it just be es that mm -hmm. it have language in there that is escalatable to towing. Um, sure. Again, the, the finer details can be worked out, but it, I think if we're going to be so specific as we're actually changing the code, that yeah. it should be it should have the word towing in there as well as a possibility, so that we're not hamstringing ourselves down the road where it's just like. We got three cars here with boots on them, and but we don't have the authority to tow them away because it's not in the language, you know. No, you only have one boot and three cars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boot, boot them together. Whatever. And the other thing too is the cost. I know that, and I tend to agree with this. Where it says, you know, it should be free for the residents, but if there's an eighty-six thirty cost for the original stickers. Is that going to be paid by the landlord who leases there? And Patty's. These people are that responsible for, you know, verifying that somebody is actually a resident with a lease agreement and then getting the sticker because, okay, I'm there for six months and then I move out and somebody else moves in. Now you're issuing tick sticker number four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, is there any way to, to keep a, a database that says, okay, well, stickers two and four are no longer valid because they moved out? Because I issued stickers five, six, and seven to the new residents. So if I'm there and I moved out, oh, I still got a parking permit. Right? I'm going to go park down there. You know what I mean? So you then have to worry about that because of that and because they're going to be responsible for doing that. I do think there should be some sort of a cost for the permit. I'm not saying expensive. I'm just saying some sort of minimal cost to cover the cost of the stickers, the cost of the time that they have to do to maintain these records. To ensure, I feel like it's similar to the transfer station stickers, they're paying excise to the town. So you're going to count it from that. 
Yeah, I like because so. yeah, because okay. they, they 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 are going to be residents of the town. They are supposed to register their vehicle right. with the town. So, um, you know, that's they, most likely how they'll prove their residency is by their registration. That's valid. The building owners paying. How property do we taxes. know when so, when a, a, a permit is it going to have an expiration on it that they have to get a new permit every year? Because what if they moved? I if I you, move down the street sort of and I want to go to Corner like Point, I'm going to use my sticker to park right there. I'm valid. Right. I think in every two year situation is totally fine. I don't. Yeah. I, I mean, with with a limited number of spaces, I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. I agree. I, I, agree. I don't think so either. But I think this right here is going to be used when the apartments move in. And so, if you're going to establish it, you should do all the steps now. Right. Yeah. You can also I, flag their registration with a note that they're a parking permit. Oh, oh I didn't know you whatever. could do that. Yeah. yeah. And if they come in to re-register and change their address, that would flag us. Oh, yeah, no. that's possible. Then that, that makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Um, okay. In terms of the cost being passed on, I, I again, this right now the cost is very minimal. Right. If, if in the future it is expanded to the many new apartments that are being built, that's and things what like I'm that, concerned about. If that's, worry about if, yeah, if, that, if that's what, where we're going... And then we can we should address it at that point. And okay. People All pay right. five dollars a parking permit. We you know. Yeah, I'm thinking minimal, like five bucks. Yeah, exactly. But I was thinking, right. well, what if you get a hundred just something apartments? Just offset the cost yeah. of the signs. Or exactly. If, if right now yeah. there's three. We're gonna make fifteen yeah. bucks. <laughs> right. It's not it's not worth the, putting it in the computer for code. But um, but yeah, if when the other apartments are built up and it becomes right. a bigger usage then definitely we should, you know. Because I think you're going to run into the same issue with those that are living in the school apartments. Because once you start building apartments across the street and there's not enough parking, they're going to start saying, well, I'll just park over here, even though they don't live over there. So that's why I see this as becoming a, a bigger deal. And right now, three people, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But in a couple of years, this could be. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah. So, yeah. James, if you want to... Get the language That's updated. Good. We'll take a vote on this next, next yeah. meeting. Yeah, sounds great. I'm meeting with the Chiefs Thursday. This goes back like three or four years with Tom about him parking on along Rochester Street. Yeah. Pick up a four like four parking spaces along Rochester Street behind the town hall. Um, we do have plans when we do some street work along Sullivan to add on tree parking along Sullivan, a few along Wilson. And uh, so, try to pick up parking where we can. Yep. And and also, like Tom mentioned, um, Bad Wolf has requested some 30-minute parking in front of their building. So um, I would propose maybe we think about maybe for the next meeting, possibly two in front of their building with 30-minute parking, and see how that goes for them. Instead, well, of, you saying like because it's two-hour parking right now. They want the two spots that are directly in front of that wall. Okay. It'll okay. be like 30 minute parking, is that what you said? So that won't, so it'll only be in front there, and the other two hours will be, because if you go to the gym, you may be there more than 30 minutes. Yes. I think uh, the people that, I, I think, I believe, and Sherry could correct me if I'm wrong, I think they park in that center a lot. They can park in the center, okay. The, um, so. But may, yeah, where so would it would just be those. Would the signs be on the sidewalk, or would they be like painted on their pavement? Or um, there's a pole. It would probably be. I'm guessing would be you put it on the pole and you say here to the curb, pointing okay. that way for 30 minute parking. Have we asked the police? Would they? Because the other ones are obviously going to have to monitor it. I have not yet yeah, talked to them about, about, about those, no. No. but I will put that on yeah. your list of things to talk to them about. Yeah. Next, we have a CMP poll permit for the intersection of Wilson and Sullivan Streets. I'm going to guess this has to do with the big new thing we're building over there. <laughs> this poll, I think it's the intersection of Wilson and Wilson. This is Wilson, yeah, Wilson and Sullivan. Okay, so it's yeah, it's not really it's not really the intersection of Wilson and Sullivan. Like but it's it's down. pretty much directly across from Public Safety Way. So that, that pole is right in the middle of the curb cut to Edgeway. So that's why it just needs to be moved down the street a little bit. 
So uh, according to this diagram, the old pole is being removed and put where the exist uh, new pole is, and there's ar there's already a, another pole 75 feet away. That's what I'm reading. So the the existing pole one is being replaced, moved 75 feet closer to the older pole, the second pole, and going to be a taller one. Okay, so yeah, so. Existing pole one and old pole two are going away I and being so. replaced yep. with by one pole. Moving existing pole. Thing. Yeah, it looks like they're going with a mine. taller pole and removing one pole. Pole two will also be a second riser. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions? I'll make a motion that we allow Central Main Power to relocate their pole on the corner on the Wilson Street as presented to us. A second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> Terrific. Um, all right, we have no quick claim deeds, no abatements. What? Patty's request. Oh, and this one? Yes, yep. sorry. <laughs> request to close <laughs> customer service on June 1st, 2023, from 8 to 9 a.m. for training. So we're just closing for an hour for training. I imagine that's for the election. No, it's actually with PD. Okay. About difficult situations, and they check our panic buttons. Oh, nice. Cool. Good. Like this one right here? Yes. Perfect. Um, Are you going to post like a sign up for mm -hmm. the week before just yeah. saying? Okay. Yeah. Maybe this there said put it up. Okay. Yeah. It works for me. So, okay. yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the request to close customer service on June 1st, 2023 from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. for training. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Now we have no quick land deeds. Now we have no abatements. Any second public comment? I will close the second public comment. We have no executive session. Um, in terms of um, in terms of other business, um, starting in June, the meetings will change to the first and third Tuesday of every month uh, as select board meetings. It, it's currently second and fourth. We are going to first and third. Um, as a consequence, the first meeting in July falls on the 4th of July. So, um, after discussion with the town clerk, it's decided that uh, it was discussed that right now we'll try to front load everything into June and then back load everything to the second meeting in July and just skip the July 4th meeting entirely. Um, and then at a future date, if we need to, we can add a meeting back in if it comes you know, an emergency. Um, so I would like to move that we uh, cancel the select board meeting for July 4th, 2023. Just make sure it really is the 4th and not like Oh, actually, right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I checked already. I thought it was the 4th. first Tuesday is the 4th. Yes, okay. yes, I've already checked. All right. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. So right now, there will be no meeting on the week of July 4th. So we can enjoy our wonderful Independence Day. So again, starting, this is the last meeting for May. Next, next meeting is June 6th. Mm -hmm. On June, oh, what is it, the uh, 13th is the election. We're approving the town budgets for the next year. We have two select board seats available open and four candidates, and we have a seat for the school board that is open with one candidate. Uh, please show up to vote and, you know, make your voice be heard. Uh, there's like 45 <laughs> ballot measures to approve all the different budgets of all the different departments. Please come. Please participate. We, des we want you there. Um, and we'll see you on June 6th. 
Anybody else? Anything else? I, I have a couple things that I want to add in. Um, in watching the little bit of the planning board meeting the other day, um, and it was brought up that maybe Berwick should look at drilling some wells to take care of our water problem. And for people who haven't been around for a while, is we've just gone through two years of doing an exploratory of drilling wells around town. We hired an engineering firm and a geological firm to come in to analyze things. We drilled, what, eight wells, I think? Yeah. And none of them came up with enough water. Um, there is a possibility of wells being out on the further reaches of town, but in order to pipe it to our plant, it costs approximately a million dollars a mile so it quickly outstrips the cost of a new water plant. So I just put that out there. Um, I also want to remind everybody on Monday is the Memorial Day Parade. And uh, Monday morning, um, I think the meeting at 1030 is when they meet. Is, uh, um, we've all been invited. So I uh, hope to see everybody there. Yes, that, and, and that goes, to what we're saying about the, the water plant, it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the meeting. Ever since I started on the board, we've been dealing with water issues on and off, and we've been dealing with them in a progressive way, with, with new staff, with new equipment, searching for new water sources, well drilling, possibility of a new plant, upgrading the plant. It's all been done in a very... You know, it ta it's taken a while, but we've all we've gone through all the other options before spending the million and a half dollars to upgrade our water plant. So this is not something that we just did on the whim, and you know we haven't thought about. It. It's we've gone through all the other options, and that's the problem with with the, with the government. It, you know, it takes time. We've been working on it for years, and we've tried all the other solutions, and this is where we're at. Um, but again, if you have questions, email the board. Email James. We had the answers. There are no secrets. We will tell you whatever you need to know about uh, what's going on in town. So uh, I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Good night. Good night. I was late.